guys as a reminder i am going to be giving away a limited edition animal cross and nintendo switch on this channel all you really have to do to participate is subscribe and hit the bell to stay tuned for notifications and then drop a comment down below so i can have your username you can say pretty much whatever you want and if you already were subscribed and hit the bell then all you really have to do is just leave a comment i'll be announcing the winner during march 31st video good luck and enjoy today's video it's really cool when you have a chance to look at a game that you love so much and you have a chance to like crack it open when he wins he t poses because that's <laughs> <laughs> that is where dominance, doesn't it? I feel like I'm seeing a lot of stuff that we're not supposed to see whatsoever, man. So the other day I was live streaming an open Smash Bros. Arena. That means that pretty much anyone can just see the code on the screen and they can join and participate in the game. Now, while this was happening, a user by the name of Rare Curvy also joined the arena. However, this wasn't just any other player. This person was actually hacking. Now, normally people say someone's hacking when they're lagging or when they're lag switching or whatever. No, I mean like this guy grabbed his switch and actually hacked it because he was doing things that you can't even do. So first red alarm is that when I actually go and look at the replays that have hacked content, first of all, a lot of them don't even have a thumbnail because we're playing on stages that you normally cannot really play on and versus, but let alone save a replay. And also these matches where he's using characters that you cannot even play, if you notice, it's a replay of a character by themselves in an arena. Dude. <laughs> he's three stuck at him. <laughs> all right you know what hold on let somebody beat the pac-man and then he can't come back hold on i can't let y'all kick the pac-man out y'all get a three stop by the pac-man i'm sorry giga bowser on the screen right now wait really yeah there's giga bowser we got Bro. a hacker <laughs> yo okay that's clickbait right there yo keep it coming man content yo we got a right. we got a hacker so imagine me laying back in my chair i'm just chilling it's like six in the morning and then i look up after taking a bite of my favorite snack, and I see Giga Bowser on the screen. And I'm like, what is this? Now, the first thing that I thought was, well, if you're playing a hack character that will desync the game, and then you're not gonna be able to like actually play the game because it's gonna throw everyone off sync and then people go offline. But actually, because he's hacking elements that are already within the game, all the players have those elements in their consoles and their games, then the game doesn't actually desync, and then you can actually play with Giga Bowser in online arena. Now, how this dude doesn't get banned? I don't know. We probably will get banned soon, but doesn't matter. My man risked everything <laughs> so should to appear in a video. Also, the way Giga Bowser works is so weird. Like, first of all, he has so much super armor and a lot of his moves. And also, he has a lot of wanky stuff because he's using the boss model, apparently. So this works a little bit different than a normal character. For example, you can't grab him. You can't really interact with him in certain ways. And he's a lot heavier and does a, a way more damage than you expect him. Look at that super armor, dude. <laughs> now, something really interesting is that when Giga Bowser loses a game, you actually have nobody in the results screen. It's like the character just won by themselves, against themselves, pretty much. It's like there's just no opponent. And also, of course, when he wins, he T poses, because that, <laughs> that is where it's dominance, doesn't it? So, first thing he did is that he whooped us with just Giga Bowser, and then we were like pretty amazed at that point in time. But then he said, let me show you some real hacks. So then he decided to pull out stages that you can't even play in versus mode. And that's when things got really interesting. Now, here's the escape sequence, but in a versus format. How this is going to work, I have no idea, but this is not how the game is intended to work. I'll tell you this much. So the hacker guy is Pac-Man, and he's pretty much just running away. At first, we were like, okay, so I suppose you just get to the end, like in classic mode, and then you win? But how can you really win? There's no, there's no blast zones or anything like that. You can't really kill an opponent. It's in a stock match. So I was extremely confused at this point in time. There's the barrel that ends the level. Now, he gets on the barrel. And then he has to wait for the Yoshi player to make it there. And then the level ends. And then you die. <laughs> oh, but he won. He actually won, though. Like, this works because the level's supposed to end and send you to the final boss in whatever classic mode. That was so derpy. He actually said in the chat, because the hacker guy was in the chat, he actually said that he was buffering jump, which made him come out one frame earlier than Yoshi. And then he managed to win because of that, because he died slightly later, basically. <laughs> that little Mac is not gonna make it, man. <laughs> oh, little Mac, don't, don't fall behind, bro. He put the hydra. That's no evil. So this time around, he said, "Watch, there's a really funny gimmick you can do." So the little Mac gets on the on the barrel here, where you supposedly end the level. So all you have to do is wait for your partner to make it into the barrel, and then you can end the level. However, he said that you can actually do something even worse. So you can actually break the little blocks here, and because you're already in the barrel, you actually cannot escape. You can't, you cannot leave. You're just stuck in that area. And then you wait. <laughs> Look at Pac-Man taunting, dude. Just doing the little music thingy. 
Jesus Christ, that, that is evil. And here's the boss stage from when you fight the Ganondorf boss version in, in the adventure mode or in classic mode. So this stage is actually sick, and the best part is that this stage is actually within the intro, but you're not really allowed to play it unless you're fighting the boss fight itself. But it's just really cool how you can grab these elements from the game and then just make them into 1v1 fights in an arena format. As you can see, these stages are actually playable. It makes me feel like, why doesn't Nintendo just like grab these stages and, you know, release them in a pack or whatever, you know, give people some little bit more variety or some more memes to fight with. And here's the Monster Hunter stage, which actually looks gorgeous. I mean, look at the background and everything. When you don't have the actual dragon coming in and destroying everything, then the stage looks so empty and it just looks really strange. Like, obviously something's missing, but still though, you can really see like all the details and all that. It's a lot easier to appreciate what's on the stage, essentially. But man, a lot of these stages, I mean, I don't want to say they're like amazing for 1v1, but it's still really cool that we can actually play them. And you don't have to use hack characters or anything like that. You can have like a normal match. Oh, so Little Mac really good on this stage too. It has no off stage. So I mean, Little Mac doesn't actually have to recover. So definitely that's a big help. So this is one of the ones that blew my mind the most. You can actually go in the stage where you can blow up the trophy or the spirit or whatever. And that gun is crazy broken. Also, the blast zone zones here are so short. You die like a 10%. And that, oh, I died like a 30 there. Also, the background looks sick, but it's cool how, like, the camera just focuses on this one angle. Like, it doesn't really move anywhere from there on. It <laughs> just kicked the Isabel out the level. Back to Animal Crossing, you go. But yeah, it seems you can pick almost any stage to just play an arena with. You can also play on the result screen. Like, did you know that actually the windscreen, when you win a match, it's an actual stage. I didn't even know that. I thought it was just like, I don't know, maybe like a picture or maybe like something that they overlay. I don't know how they actually make this game work, but I didn't think it was going to be an actual legitimate stage. But matter of fact, you can actually go and look through this, which I find it to be so interesting. Look how much detail they added. They actually made the sky and a bunch of stuff over here. There's like the whole city over there. Now keep in mind, I don't know how much of that is actually modeled, but I don't, I do know a lot of these stages actually have like at least partial models and all that. But isn't it crazy though, how they actually made all of this just for, I you know, when people win a match or all that, and you can actually see under it and all that. It's, man, I didn't even know there were those blue things at the bottom there for all these things. I feel like I'm seeing a lot of stuff that we're not supposed to see whatsoever, man. I feel like I'm creeping here. <laughs> this one completely blew my mind. So this is actually Joker's windscreen stage. So you know when Joker wins, he actually like, you know, goes into this little loop. Like it looks like he's running. Matter of fact, I don't think he's actually running in circles. As you can see, the stage itself is rotating or the background at least is because this is rotating. It gives the effect of Joker actually like running or whatever, or the effect that it makes it seem like he's like running in circles or whatever way they make it seem. But clearly this is how they do the trick. And it's just so interesting how they made it all happen. Now, I believe this is the finalist nation version. When you fight Kaleem and Darkon, I believe you have the four platforms. But as you can see, you have like the whole light and darkness split in the background. Tell me that doesn't look sick. I would love for this to be a competitive stage, though four platforms will probably be very toxic for competitive play simply because you can probably abuse them for some insane combos. But I mean, it will be cool to have this stage rather than not have it, at least to have the variant or something like that, because it's obviously coded into the game. You can play it. It's playable. I don't know why they just don't make it a thing, but whatever, I suppose. But regardless, at least the background looks so sick, the way it's rotating and all that. It'd be really awesome to have this in in competitive play for sure and you can also apparently play on the home run contest stage but it doesn't work exactly the same way as you will expect it to now look at the map here you have the sonics actually running all the way past the station now the camera doesn't even go past that like i actually cannot follow them and in game you i mean this is as far as they show you you can't really look at the right but as you can see the other player actually goes all the way to the right and the blast zone is actually all the way out there there's there's actually a blast zone in home run contest stage but for some reason, the blast zone doesn't actually exist on the left side. So if I keep going to the left side here, um, you kind of just, just stop. <laughs> at some point in time, it just it just stops you. But it's so interesting to look at how these stages like work behind the scenes, if you want to put it that way. As you can see, I can look at here. The blast zone is somewhere all the way past there on the bridge. Yeah, the camera cuts off right where the water cuts off. That makes sense. You're not supposed to pretty much look past that. But it's crazy how they actually model the whole city back here. And then probably, probably the camera ends up right about where the ground starts over there. It's really cool when you have a chance to look at a game that you love so much and you have a chance to like crack it open and just look at all these cool details that, you know, were there, but you were not able to see them for some reason. 
It's just really cool, like, what hacking can do sometimes. If done with good intentions, of course. I mean, this guy just came to have some fun in my arena. He didn't, like, come and ruin a tournament or is trying to get, like, a GSP for free or anything crazy like that. Here's where things get extremely wild. So, not only can you pick the stage from the adventure mode. So, this is towards the end where you're about to be the adventure mode and you're climbing this thing to go fight Galim and Darkon. And then you're going through this segment where you have to do a whole bunch of stuff. Now, apparently, you can make this into a 1v1 battle, but you have to have very specific rule sets, apparently. And then, if you notice, the other guys switch characters in the middle of the match. They were Banjo and now they're Bayonetta. And they were, like, deleted from the game momentarily. But here's the cool part, is that you can actually progress all the way up, and you will actually eventually fight Darkman and Galeem. And, but it's like it's like a very long stage. It takes like several minutes to get up there and all that. However, the reason this one ended is because it had a stock format. However, if you do this with a 10 minute format is what the hacker said, you can actually trigger the actual like going up and, and fight Darken and Galeem and all that. So he challenged me to beat this, which is actually pretty difficult the way he set it up. I'm not sure if it's different from the one in Adventure Mode. It's probably very similar or even the same. But it's just really weird to do it in a format within the arena. So the first two times I actually did this, I ended up failing and I raged massively. Yeah, you better get the true ending, dude. Oh my... I died. Oh, are you so good? No, the game, the, the, the switch crashed. No way. It did. God damn it. So Dude. the bombs at the end, like how, what are you supposed to do? Just don't get hit, man. No. Dude, there's like five bombs on the second, on the last part. Like literally the whole floor is bombs. Oh. oh my god, dude. Oh, you were so... Oh, no. Dude. But this is the winner. So I decided to go Link because obviously those bombs are a massive problem. And because I can grab the bomb and detonate it all the way up, then obviously I can trigger the bombs from a distance safely, and then I can actually climb all the way up. The problem is that Link is so slow that getting up there was actually a massive challenge. So here's something really interesting is that he actually decided to go Pokemon Trainer. As you can see, He's the unnamed Squirtle on the left side. That's actually the hacker guy. But it registers player two as the Inkling who's no longer in the game. Now, the reason he picked Pokemon Trainer is apparently because it's glitch or something when you hack this. And then Pokemon Trainer is unkillable. So then you can actually finish the segment because your partner never dies. So that means if I were to die at this segment, um, I actually don't game over. Because before this, if you die at any point in time while you're climbing, then you immediately game over. And then uh, your switch actually freezes. Now, here's the reason why losing and I rage earlier was because if I lost, then the switch freezes. So, obviously, we don't want that because we have to make the whole new arena and it was a massive hassle. But with him being Pokemon Trainer, for some reason, makes it so I can die multiple times in the climb up. And obviously, in the battle segments, if I die, then it's fine. I can just respawn indefinitely. Dude, it'd be cool to have a stage like this. I feel like a stage like this could really work in competitive. It's not symmetrical, but still, it could be interesting maybe to have an asymmetrical stage for once. Also, the background is absolutely beautiful. Imagine if we could pay DLC to have like reskins on stages and characters. Nintendo. Now, this is towards the final segment. And actually, dodging Galeem and Darkon when they have these spears going around is actually a lot more difficult than it looks like. Initially, I thought if I got hit by them and I died, I will actually game over. Oh my god, Link, make it. Ah! <laughs> Alright, we're good now. Oh, here's the bombs. Oh my god, I literally grazed that bomb. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh my god, how am I not dead? Oh! Oh! So even though I ended up dying, as you can see, because he's Pokemon Trainer, then I don't game over there anymore. But previously, every time I die there, then the game will just freeze. And here's the final battle. I mean, you can see Galeem and Darkon on the back. So you're supposed to win this battle, and then you go on fight them both, or or one of them, depending on which side you pick. I forget how this works, honestly. I haven't played Adventure Mode in forever. But because, obviously, we're not playing Adventure Mode, you don't actually fight them as boss characters. Instead, it kind of just ends. <laughs> so now that we killed the last character, which is Mario, this unnamed Pokemon trainer, which, by the way, it lists him as Yoshi now, even though he's not Yoshi, obviously. So now you actually can't do anything. I think no matter what happens, I win because player two doesn't exist in the game anymore. Or rather, it counts him as the Yoshi down below, which is one of the multiple characters. So you're going to win no matter what, because obviously I'm like plus 35 at this point. 
All right, now let's see what happens. Okay. They're like a blue, they like. Oh, I won. It's like I won like a normal match, but I won a match like by myself. There's like no opponent. My God, dude. that's weird. I have, I'm plus thirty five. So there you have it. That's the story of how a hacker joined my arena and showed me a bunch of really cool stuff. Honestly, a really wholesome hacker. It was actually amazing to have him on. You guys should definitely check him out on Twitter. Feel free to follow this person for showing us some really cool Smash Bros stuff. And with that said, I hope you guys genuinely enjoyed today's video. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to stay tuned with all my daily uploads. And also, thank you so much, guys, for supporting this channel. I really appreciate you guys. It's been so fun to make videos for you guys, and I really want to keep doing that. With that said, see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching.